Beneath the quiet farmlands of America's Midwest, something terrifying is stirring. For the past several months, scientists have recorded more than 200 earthquakes rippling through the ground beneath the Mississippi River Valley, a region most Americans never think of as earthquake country. The tremors are small, barely noticeable on the surface, but together they tell a story, a story of pressure building deep underground along a fault line powerful enough to make rivers flow backward and reshape the land itself. This isn't California. There are no towering mountains or clear cracks in the earth, just small towns, bridges, and farmlands resting on one of the most dangerous hidden faults in the world. And if history is any guide, the New Madrid Fault doesn't warn before it strikes. Because the last time it awoke, in the winter of 1811, the ground shook so violently that church bells rang a thousand miles away. Today, the same forces are stirring again, and experts now believe the next major quake could rival anything we've ever seen in the continental United States. The last time the ground here truly moved, it didn't stop for months. December 16, 1811, 2 a.m. While most of the frontier slept, the earth under New Madrid, Missouri, ripped open. Homes lifted from their foundations, trees snapped mid-trunk. The Mississippi River, the lifeline of the young nation, suddenly reversed its flow. But that was only the beginning. Over the next 10 weeks, two more colossal quakes struck. January 23rd and February 7th, 1812. Each one stronger than the last. Frontier settlers rode of the ground, rolling like waves on the ocean. Entire forests sank beneath the mud, forming what's now Real Foot Lake, Tennessee. Church bells rang in Boston, chimneys toppled in Cincinnati. The shaking was felt as far north as Canada. Imagine that power today. Memphis, gone dark. St. Louis, bridges twisted like wire. Highways buckled, because scientists say those same fault lines are still alive and still locked. Modern seismologists estimate the main shocks range from magnitude 7.5 to 8.0, rivaling California's worst quakes. But there's one terrifying difference. The bedrock of the eastern U.S. carries seismic waves five times farther. Meaning one new Madrid quake doesn't just hit a city, it shakes an entire region. And the fault has never truly gone silent. Over 4,000 microquakes have rattled the zone since the 1970s. Each one a reminder that pressure is rebuilding. Two centuries later, the land may look peaceful again. But beneath the farms and highways, the same fractures are creaking back to life. And the question haunting geologists now is chillingly familiar. When it moves again, will we be ready? Deep beneath the Midwest, the earth is quietly shifting. Unlike the famous San Andreas Fault that slices through California, the new Madrid Fault doesn't sit at the edge of tectonic plates. It lies in the middle of one, the vast North American plate, which makes it a geological anomaly. Hundreds of millions of years ago, this part of the continent almost tore itself apart. A massive rift began forming, stretching from present-day Arkansas toward Illinois. But the continent didn't split. The rift failed, leaving behind a scar in the crust, a weak zone buried deep beneath the surface. For centuries, that scar has been slowly squeezed by the immense forces that drive plate movement. Pressure builds, millimeter by millimeter, year after year, and when the crust can't take it anymore, it breaks. That's what happened in 1811. And scientists believe it's happening again. Seismometers across the region have recorded thousands of small quakes since the 1970s, most too weak to feel, but powerful enough to reveal a pattern. They cluster along the ancient rift, a silent signal that stress is building once more. GPS satellites have detected subtle ground movement, a few millimeters here, a few there, the surface shifting like a slow inhale before a shout. And what worries researchers most is how widespread the shaking could be when the next rupture comes. In the soft, dense rock of the Midwest, seismic waves don't fade quickly, they travel. They amplify, they ripple across entire states, shaking cities hundreds of miles from the epicenter. In California, a magnitude 7 might devastate one region. In the New Madrid zone, the same event could rattle a dozen. That's why scientists call this fault a sleeping dragon, buried under farmland, hidden beneath rivers, yet capable of reshaping the heart of America in a single night. The air is still, the river is calm, then without warning, the ground begins to roll. At first, it's a vibration, 
dishes rattling, windows humming. Then, a violent jolt. Roads buckle, power lines snap, bridges sway as if made of rope. This is what a magnitude 7.7 .7 earthquake would look like if it struck the New Madrid Fault today. According to FEMA's national simulation, more than seven states would feel catastrophic shaking at once. Missouri, Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, Illinois, Mississippi, and Indiana. Within seconds, downtown Memphis would be plunged into chaos. Brick buildings collapse, gas lines rupture, cell networks fail, highways that cross the Mississippi twist and crack, cutting off rescue routes. Further north, St. Louis trembles as the gateway arch sways several feet side to side. Old riverfront districts crumble. Power plants near the river shut down automatically as sensors detect ground failure. Across the Midwest, the shaking continues for nearly four minutes, an eternity for anyone caught inside. Then, the aftershocks begin. Thousands of them, some strong enough to topple what the first quake spared. Power grids fail across multiple states. Hospitals overflow. The Mississippi River becomes unrecognizable. Sand boils, fissures, and mud volcanoes burst from the ground as water surges into new cracks. Experts estimate that more than 80,000 people could be killed or injured, and over 2 million left without homes. The economic cost? More than $300 billion, the single most expensive natural disaster in American history. And the cruelest twist is that no one would be ready. Because unlike the West Coast, the Midwest has no early warning system, no strict building codes, and no real plan for when the ground beneath it finally decides to break again. Most people think tsunamis only strike coastlines. But during the New Madrid earthquakes of 1811 and 1812, witnesses described something few believed possible. Waves surging through the Mississippi River itself, boats thrown onto the banks, the current reversing, surging upstream for minutes at a time. If a quake of that power struck today, the same thing could happen again. Only this time, the results would be catastrophic. The Mississippi is no longer a wild frontier river. It's lined with cities, fuel depots, and power plants. Ports stretch from St. Louis to New Orleans, handling nearly 500 million tons of cargo each year. A massive inland surge would tear through docks, bridges, and levees. Tugboats and barges could be lifted onto land. Pipelines running beneath the riverbed might rupture, igniting fires that spread across the water's surface. And the shaking wouldn't stop there. The soft soils of the Midwest are prone to liquefaction, a process where solid ground briefly turns to liquid. Entire neighborhoods could slump or vanish into the mud, just as they did two centuries ago. Then there's the hidden chain reaction few talk about, the Mississippi's role as a national artery, a rupture of bridges or fuel lines here wouldn't just devastate local towns. It would choke supply chains across half the country, stranding food, fuel, and cargo in the middle of America. It's not just a local disaster. It's the kind of event that could ripple through the economy, the power grid, and even global trade. All triggered by a fault most people don't even know exists. The New Madrid fault doesn't roar often, but when it does, the entire nation will feel it. From skyscrapers in St. Louis to riverboats on the Mississippi, the shaking won't just rattle windows, it will test everything we've built. The hardest truth? We're not ready. Thousands of bridges, pipelines, and power stations across the Midwest were built without major seismic protection. Hospitals and schools sit directly atop ancient fault lines. Even the ground beneath our feet, soft, wet, and unstable, could amplify the shaking instead of absorbing it. Scientists are racing to understand when this will happen again. GPS readings show the crust in the region is slowly shifting, millimeter by millimeter, building pressure in silence. And history tells us that silence doesn't last forever. The last time this fault broke loose, the Mississippi River reversed its flow, and the land itself was rearranged. If it happens again in our lifetime, the effects could rival the costliest natural disasters in U.S. history, and it could happen without warning, tomorrow or 50 years from now. What would you do if the ground began to move beneath you right now? Would your city stand? Would your home survive? These are questions no one in the Midwest wants to ask, but everyone should. Because this isn't a matter of if, it's only a matter of when. If you found this story eye-opening, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do you believe the next great American earthquake will come from the West Coast?
or from right here in the heart of the country, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss what happens next. Because the ground beneath America is far less stable than we think.